My name is Alf Bingham. I spent 29 years at Eli Lilly and Company uh, working in R&D. Lots of different parts of the R&D process uh, I was involved in. Uh, I spent that lifetime in preparation for my subsequent career, which was to understand all the places where there was opportunity in improving human health and the therapies uh, that attend to that. And so subsequent, my last few years there, and then subsequently, I have looked at ways of launching businesses and systems for tapping into the world in novel new ways and creating more and better therapies for our grandchildren. We're recognizing that uh, it's an industry that's coming to the end of its blockbuster model and ready to leap to a new curve. Well, it, it's primarily cultural. Um, they have to be willing to shed some old biases uh, that have been around for a long time. I think we're still shaking off uh, the shackles of the Bell Labs model of creation and innovating. And nothing to put it down, it's a great model and it still works. But it's one modality of many. And when you look at the nature of the problem you're tackling, you ought to pair that up with the best method of tackling it. And that is an opportunity that we have in 2011 that we simply didn't even have to consider 30 years ago when a lot of us were minting our degrees, uh, moving into leadership positions, and looking backwards at what had been the very successful mode by which we'd innovated uh, previously. Well, co-creation is a broad term and includes a lot of different ways uh, of tackling a problem. So if I were to think about some of them and just start kind of ticking them off, I could talk about user-led innovation, the work of Eric von Hippel at MIT. I could talk about uh, the relationships that high-tech industries and research-intensive industries have always had with academia, but the promotion of that to new levels through public-private partnerships. Uh, I could talk about classic things like joint venturing uh, and partner business partnerships, uh, but then there are the new modalities like uh, crowdsourcing uh, and open sourcing and innovation methods that uh, tech scouting that didn't really exist, certainly not in our language, although the, the rudiments were there, but certainly not in our language. These didn't exist a decade ago. Yeah, um, I do have a few favorites, although there are like 650 great examples, and I could, I could go to any one, but you know, let me answer that with more than one. Um, actually, one of the very first examples, in the first 20 problems that we posted, uh, a solution came in for a novel new route to a small molecular fragment that had the potential to become part of a cardiovascular drug. This small fragment was actually determining the price of the, of the drug and was actually going to price it out of market viability because no one had needed this fragment in an economical manner before. And so all of the known literature for how to prepare it uh, was, was based on the lack of that kind of a, a large commercial need. So we posted this challenge to come up with a new synthetic route and very few steps and at very high purity and at very low cost and the solutions start coming in and one came in along with a sample saying here I've done it this is what I've achieved these are the results this is why it will be a tenth uh, of the cost of anything that you've been working on up until now and we thought who would do such a thing and then we found this retired executive from Herxt who had when he retired, not chosen to go out and um, buy a new set of golf clubs or buy a condo on the, uh, uh, on the green, uh, but had built a laboratory. Had built a laboratory and a wood shop because he had two passions in life. One was chemistry and one was woodworking. And his executive career had taken him too far from both. And so he said he spends every morning working on a chemical problem and every afternoon working on a wood project. And he said, when I found your website, I suddenly knew what my assignments were. 
So, you know, I thought that was a great story. It explained that there are all these utilities other than cash for why people will passionately engage. So a second example. A second example was NASA brought a problem to us. Um, the problem was how to predict solar particle storms. NASA had been working on the problem with their internal staff and with their contracted staff for 30 years. And they had made real great progress. But still, they wanted to I improve this even further for the reason that solar particle storms are dangerous to astronauts that are engaged in extravehicular activities once they're outside the atmosphere and they don't have anything to protect them um, from this ionizing radiation. So they posted the problem on our website. And remember, this is built on 30 years of work. We had it for 120 days. In 120 days, we provided solutions back to NASA that improved on all the work they had done and, that, and now provided them with the best solution uh, they had ever achieved. And it came from a retired telecom engineer in upstate New Hampshire, um, somebody who wouldn't have probably made the cut for uh, consulting engagement, uh, not because he wasn't a genius individual and not because he didn't have uh, talent and skill, but simply because he didn't fit the mold of who you would have assigned a solar particle storm prediction problem too. So um, that would be a, a second example I'm very proud of. Well, there, there, are, there are more uh, IT platforms, but you know, one of the tools that I think has been a huge enabler of co-creation and was created for this purpose, but we forget it in our search for news and YouTube videos, the internet itself. You know, the internet was the ARPANET, and it was designed to enable collaboration across different organizations. It was a co-creation tool. And ultimately, we have learned to get smarter about how these platforms are constructed and what kinds of qualities and properties enable you to make a contribution to a project I'm working on without us going through the entire social experience uh, of connecting and sharing ideas and everything. So these platforms are, are connecting the world in, in, a different, in, in, a, in a different way. But they're layered on top of that. So if I were to say, what do I think is one of the greatest tools uh, ever developed, say the internet has pretty much changed, changed everything when it comes to the area of co-creation. It's our job now to figure out how to layer better and better structures on top of that.